We're exactly five days away from our upcoming meet and greet, and we've still got a lot of planning to do. So in this episode, we're gonna show you some of the things that we're up to to pull off this kind of an event. Now, what started off as an expectation of getting a few dozen people together at a local restaurant here in BGC has ballooned into a pretty massive event with almost 500 RSVPs so far, and at the rate they're still coming in, a very strong possibility that we're gonna end up in the range of 600 people at this event. Now what that means is completely different venues. So we've had to pull together a rooftop venue that's going to accommodate a much bigger group. We've had to arrange a lot of other things between security, food and drinks, the location itself, activities, games, prizes, the whole shebang. We've got quite a budget and that means we need sponsors. So today I've come down to the Samsung Science Hub to meet with them and see if there's a possibility that maybe they wanna help support the event. Meanwhile, Rocio and Nelvin Ocampo are working on their own deals to help facilitate some of the food and beverage and other things that we're gonna have at the event. So I'm gonna head in here and see what I can do. I'll let you know afterwards. That actually went really surprisingly well. What a great gang. I got to meet with three of them. Fun to talk to, really smart, and that was probably the most efficient meeting I have ever participated in in my entire life. But when we get together with the Ocampos in a little bit, I'll fill you in on the outcome. It's really been overwhelming and humbling, the outpouring of support we've had for our meet and greet. Not just the people registering, but so many of you have reached out to help us with this. And there's one person in particular who reached out about event planning that we desperately need help with now that we've grown to over 400, maybe almost 500 registrations. She and the Acampos are supposed to be meeting us here now, and I actually see the famous Nelvin Ocampo. Let's hear it for Nelvin. Birthday boy. What? Well, we're, uh, Nana, Nana's already there. <laughs> and here we are back at the Shangri-La Lounge where all the power players meet to do big business. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Hello. This is Nana Nadell. She is saving our event. So I charge so a lot for talent being in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right, we're gonna figure this meet and greet thing out. And she I comes bearing gifts. She brought us this chalk nuts that we've, we've never heard of, never had it before. They're so cute. So what is chalk nuts? Well, it's a famous Filipino candy. Um, it's chocolate, but it's not the usual creamy chocolate. It's uh -huh. more chalky, powdery, so it crumbles easily. Um, you can try it. Right. So it's very nostalgic for a lot of people. Yeah. She's also teaching us Tagalog, Pasa Lumba, where you bring a gift back home with you. Mmm, it smells good. Yeah, chocolate cookie, mm. you know. It was softer than I thought it was going to be. Mm. You know what this tastes like? <laughs> it tastes like the inside of a Reese's peanut butter cup. Mm -hmm. Because it's peanut. Yeah. Because it's like just a little bit of the milk chocolate taste. It's more of that peanut taste. Mm -hmm. I think maybe it tastes a little bit less like a Reese's peanut butter cup and a little bit more like a, the inside of a Butterfinger bar, which is also sold as a separate thing called a Chico stick in the US. All right, so we need to get an update from the Lockwoods. What is new, guys? going on? The meeting went really well. What a great team. I met with three of them. Super efficient. They were already in the conference room when I showed up. I was I was early though, okay? And I mean, they were just ready to go, right to business, super nice, super smart. And I mean, I just, I have a good feeling about it, but I think we've had a lot of good feelings over the past two months about various things. That is great. Uh, All right, so what are the details? What did you guys talk about specifically with Samsung? Well, first and foremost, we did mention that we have significant expenses here between security, venue, food, beverage, that sort of thing. We really need to rely on sponsors right now. Uh, so we need some budget for that. So in terms of financial support, they're like, okay, let's see if we can get approval for it. Then the second component would be anything that's in kind. And they're like, anything you need screen wise, we've got you covered. Like, do you need an 85 inch TV in there where you can play your YouTube 
stuff on, on loop or anything? Like, yes, and they're like, done. We'll have people bring it over, set everything up for you, you're good to go. They asked if we wanted a second 85-inch TV, and I said, you know what, maybe we could put the Samsung logo on that one or do some sort of a loop presentation for their brand. They see the value there, and it's just a matter of getting approval. So I'll keep you posted on that one. Any sponsorships we get means so much to us because when we first started talking about mom duty, always be changing, joint meet and greet, it was important to both the Ocampos and the Lockwoods that we don't incur any charges to our followers, our fans that come to the event. We just want our subscribers to come and enjoy themselves and we want to show them a good time and have a party. So it's really important to us that this is for you, for the fans. Worst, worst case, I'll have to be a potluck. <laughs> so through emails, some of the vendors, some of the sponsors asked me if it was okay for them to sell some of their products at the meet and greet. And we said no, that this is free all for our subscribers as a way to say thank you. We want to have you guys enjoy the event and have everything complimentary. Ed, let's give Nana an update of what's going on here besides the Samsung. And Rocio is really the one that's been handling the behind, the process behind that. All right, so, so far we have met with Shoulder Monkey, which is a whiskey drink here in BGC. I have loved working with them, great team. They have agreed to provide us with anything that we want. So they're gonna be providing us with 300 alcoholic drinks called OMG, and it's their signature drink. And they're even gonna include a booth and a bartender. So that's great, love you guys for that. And another big sponsor for us is Sip Water Philippines, yay! We're gonna hydrate, and then dehydrate. We got it all going on. <laughs> yeah, Mark has been great. He's the head of marketing for Sip Water, and he also had that same attitude. Whatever you guys need, let us know, and we'll be there. So they're gonna provide buckets of water bottles for our guests, 500 of them. So we are covered with that. So thank you so much to Shoulder Monkey and Sip Water for just being on board and just trusting us <laughs> in our first meeting. We love you guys. We also have another official sponsor called Jump and Slide. They are a kitty event specialist. Yes, we're so excited because we, right now, we have about 60 pre-registered kids coming under the age of 12. So this is gonna be a huge kitty corner that is sponsored by Jump and Slide. They're going all out, a white and gold theme with a little castle and a slide, and it's gonna be a blast for them. So we're really excited. They were also on board with whatever we needed. They wanted to provide a lot more, but I don't think we could fit them <laughs> in the patio. What's the running total right now? Let me pull it up right now, but yeah, we're, I think 61 kids, including ours. 382 adults, 62 kids. So and grand counting. total of 444 as of now, and counting. Now for the food category, we do have some vendors that we're working with. We have messaged McDonald's, we presented it to them, and now we're just waiting to hear back on their decision if they're able to provide some food for our 400 plus attendees. We've also got Mary Grace in the pipeline. We've had great communication with them. So we are also in the works with Go-To King but we just don't know the exclusivity between McDonald's, you know, Mary Grace, and Go-To King. So we've got to kind of tread carefully when booking a food. So we will give you an update on that too. Oh, we are also in the works with Crave Well Snacks. And they are perfect because our event is a family-oriented event, and this would be perfect for the kids. And so we're supposed to be on a call in like an hour. So I'm gonna be talking to the group here, Aaron, Phil, and Elvin, about how we can work with them because they would be perfect for our event. There are also things that we're in need of. We have reached out to a friend of ours that we were on his podcast, Jan Santos, with The Scoop. Is it called The Scoop? Do you remember? The Scoop with the Scoop Creative, uh, but he is busy, he's out of town, so we still need an MC for the event. So if anybody knows any MCs, just give us a holler. Nana. Nana. <laughs> She's 
<laughs> she, Nan is the sweetest. She says that she wants to be behind the camera. She noticed that she gets so much joy and adrenaline when she sees others like succeeding and being successful with her help. And she's, I mean, she's such a huge help to us. So thank you again, a million thank yous. But Rocio has another update for Nana. <laughs> <laughs> This wouldn't have happened You're without Nana. Out. It's a photo man, and that's his actual name, photo man on Facebook. And he takes, he goes around the event and he takes pictures and he prints it out and it becomes a souvenir. So that is such a great idea. I think one of the biggest question marks in my mind still is like when it comes to decor, what is that gonna look like? Have we, what's the latest on the conversation with our event venue stylist. That is one of the biggest challenges. So yes, the venue is a blank canvas. So why don't we go show Nana and take a look at it? Awesome, let's go, let's take a look. We are here on Fifth Street and we literally just crossed over High Street and right above us is where we're having the meet and greet. It's called Fifth on Fifth because it's the fifth floor right here on Fifth Street above the Philippine Stock Exchange. So it's really connected to the Bonifacio One Mall and if you're driving, you would pull right into the parking garage for the mall and you can head straight up to the event. And for the event, just like us, you would go right in here. There's a little security area, so you put your bags through there. They said that we couldn't film in the lobby, so we had to walk right by, but that would be the entrance that you would use and go through security. And then you want to come up here and go to the fifth floor. And then we'll show you where to go from there. So out of the elevators, go down, I don't even know which side, away from the BPI sign, and then go all the way down the hall. And there's so many banks stationed along the hallway, so just pass them all, and you come into this event space. So right now it's very much a blank canvas and like Rocio was saying, we are working on the decor but the biggest issue is going to be lighting because it's going to be in the evening. So we need to figure out how to get the proper lighting and the, the microphones, the audio, the visual, all those things, going to get them to come together. Vince just mentioned that that area there it comes with a venue and it's for registration. So it's perfect, works out for us. Just asking Rocio where the kids station is gonna be and we're gonna have that outside because the bouncy castle won't fit in inside. So we're gonna put it somewhere over here in this corner that's away from the, the edges out there. So maybe this is where the food might be set up. The mm -hmm. vendors, what do you think? Yeah, I'm thinking we might need tables though on the other side or do you think we just line it all up here? Uh, with the food, it just depends on which vendors we end up having here and who, who ends up being a sponsor. Well, I know that Monkey Shoulder is supposed to be bringing their booth, so, I mean, they could put that wherever they want. It could be outside even, but it could also be over in that area. Yeah, good point. And, I don't know, maybe mix and match so that not everybody has to go to a single area to get food and drink. You know, it can be... It'll encourage mingling if it's kind of spread out. But let's go check out the outside area. So as you can see, there's not a single light out here, unless there happens to be some uplighting on some of the trees and shrubs over here, but I don't see any of it. You are not even gonna get any light from the building. I don't think you're gonna get anything significant from any of the skyscrapers around here once it's dark. And since we start at four o'clock, we've got maybe two hours of daylight remaining. It's 524 right now, and this is what it looks like. So yeah, half of it'll be in the dark. It sounds like lighting and decor is imperative for the lighting alone. So we are gonna have to book that because we're running out of time. This is beautiful lighting. I mean, gosh, if it could just be like this for the entire event, it'd be perfect because the sun is starting to go down. It's golden hour. Phil's eyes look gorgeous in that shot I just got of him. You'll be able to mingle right out here with this really good view of Fifth Street and whatever the street is right below us. I did speak to the uh, jump and slide, the bouncy castle and the ball pit company. And so they had asked if we were gonna have them inside or outside. And we said outside because we didn't know if it would fit. But Vince just told us that their castle would fit inside and it might be safer because of the wind. The wind might blow some of the balls and the kids decor. And so we were initially gonna have the bouncy castle right there in the corner, 
but I think we might have to have a change of plans. And this is why we need an event planner to help us figure this out. Nana is saying that she thinks the stage should be inside, not outside. It doesn't have to be a raised stage. So we're just thinking about weather and, uh, you know, all occasion, it's just easy to pop on inside and party still goes on. All right, so we've got an event specialist who is helping us kind of envision what this is going to look like and so she pictured some high bar tables out here some lower tables very minimal decor because we're trying not to spend that much money and so she already showed us the beautiful tea lights that kind of reflect off the buildings i mean it's gorgeous she was sending us pictures and also for the inside is very minimal we've got about a couple balloon stands and we've got tables with runners minimal flowers and one backdrop so i feel like that's all we've got but i think we can make it work we will make this work at this point we really have no choice so we would need those string lights for sure a challenge with having an event partially outside is the weather especially in the philippines is very unpredictable it could be sunny in the morning and then just pour down rain so they did recommend a dome out here but it's also on the pricier side to have it and so we said no to that because we have the inside so if it does sprinkle or rain we're just gonna brush everybody inside i guess to stay dry i don't know what that's gonna look like running inside 400 people just playing in the rain that's that's what we need sounds exactly like a party it sounds yeah, like a party, party. guys <laughs> well clearly we have a lot of details that still need to be worked out and it's crunch time we've got like four business days left until we've got to be wrapping every single thing up but i think we're making good progress so I'm optimistic. I think it's going to be a fantastic event. We need to grab the kids, get something to eat, chill for the night, pick this back up tomorrow. We're going to find some place in BGC to have dinner. If you see us walking around, come say hi to us. We can have our own little private meet and greet. Okay, so late last night, I got the proposal off to Samsung for the title sponsorship for the event. And Pat says, thanks for sending this through. I'll have a meeting with our team today to discuss this. I should be able to get back to you within the day. That'd be great news and so helpful to the budget being able to cover some of these costs because right now we're gonna be out thousands of dollars uh, just to throw the event, which, hey, we're more than happy to do it, but if we can get some sponsors like Samsung to cover some of these costs, that would be fantastic. And then Rocio's got some more confirmed sponsors for us. I mean, this is exciting. We have Sip Water, we have City Jump and Slide, Monkey Shoulder for cocktails, we have Cravewell Snacks, Daddy Mix Chili Crunch, Goto King. These are just the sponsors who are actually confirmed. And then we still have a good list of other sponsors that we're still talking to that are probably gonna come through, or at least, quite a few of them. It is all coming together. We just need a few more things to come through for us. I am gonna see if the Ocampos can get together today so we can circle the wagons a little more. We've got more updates. First of all, an update from Samsung. They're going to pass for the most part on sponsoring this particular event, which honestly, not unexpected because we were talking to them for the very first time like five days before the actual event. That's pretty crazy in terms of any company being able to pull together anything. I'm sure that we're gonna partner with them in the coming months and what a fantastic team to work with. I mean, everything from the communication to the friendliness, the, the willingness to support our channel has been absolutely incredible. So I can't wait to do that. Um, Rocio has been kicking butt, not just with the sponsors we were talking about, but also picking things up for the event. So we've got snacks and packages and deliveries and she has just been nailing all of that and in fact we're about to go meet them right now upstairs from here there are a bunch of restaurants that we like to meet them at but today we're going to sunne up on one bonifacio high street mall what we love about eating around here is that the adults can eat and converse and have some cocktails and the kids if they want to walk around the mall they can do a little shopping and browsing if they want but only using the buddy system they're not allowed to walk alone that's not safe anyway. Phil is always about safety. Mr. Safety is what we call him. Okay. I would like all of this and a drink. I'm ready for a cocktail. Let's it's the end of the day. I've been editing all day because Colt just launched an episode earlier today. We are so proud of him for doing his very first episode because he is so passionate, so knowledgeable. I'm gonna let you tell him about it. So I just created a new channel called Cold in the Wild. Make sure to go check that out. Also make sure to go check out Mom Dude because we're about to see them right now somewhere. Well, there you have it. He's got his own channel for you to subscribe to now and you can see his passion and expertise 
whenever he publishes his next episode, which is going to be in Palawan. We're going there, gosh, in a couple of days. It's sneaking up on us. Okay, we beat the Ocampos here by a few minutes because we're a little bit early, so we're going to grab the table and grab some cocktails. Oh my goodness. The Ocampos are headed out the door, but they just got a delivery for the meet and greet. And look at all those boxes that showed up at their house. <laughs> That's nuts. We have some bags to stuff and we're going to have some stuff to carry, obviously. So it looks like our supply of Cravewell snacks came. And I can't tell what this other company is. Coconut Crispy Rolls. We're just so grateful for all of these sponsors that we've been getting to provide more enjoyment for our guests with snacks and water and entertainment. And it's gonna be a really good time. At Sunnays, they have, or Sunday, they have a phenomenal happy hour because they offer three drinks for, I wanna say, 550, 550 pesos, which is about $10 or a little less USD. And I got the Jasmine Blossom, which is so, so delicious. It's like a citrus tea flavor, but with booze in it. And I got a tickling, which has Luisita Oro, which is a Spanish liqueur of some sort. And then it also has a pineapple juice and Campari, one of my favorite spirits of all time. These are no schlep cocktails. For 550 pesos for three, they really do a good job. And do I feel bad for diving in here before the Ocampos get here? No, because we'll make sure they catch up. Here are the Ocampos! <laughs> we have an announcement to make that I will be announcing. We have a move-in date. We're moving in at 10 a.m. on Friday. <laughs> Congrats, congrats guys. Yes, high five. Only two more nights in a hotel. See, I told you, the kids just go out and shop. They go do whatever at the mall. Cheers. Cheers. The final countdown, guys. One of the things that popped up today does relate to our total list of registrations versus what the venue is going to accommodate. Do we have clarification at this point on how many people we actually can have in the venue at one time? So I was told the venue can hold up to 400 people, 200 inside and 200 outside. But after talking to a few different people in charge, the number has changed to 250 at a time. But we have about 500 people registered. So that is our challenge right now. Not sure what we're gonna do about that. Well, I think it, it was Rocio that had the idea of doing timing and people timing up, you know, signing up for a time slot, which at this point might be too complicated because people would almost have to re-register for a new time slot. But if we announce that it would be, you know, it's as of now it's open from four to eight, that there would be two different times that people could choose. So like have a program set up for the four to six and then a program from six to eight, which will complicate things and it's in a few days. So I don't even know if we can pull that together. Can I just tell you what the best solution is? Just let it go wild. The whole purpose of this is to give gratitude and, and thank our fans and thank our, our followers and subscribers. So I don't want to leave anybody out who actually makes it to the venue. I totally agree what, with what Erin was saying because imagine somebody that is traveling or driving hours to come meet us and then they're turned away. We would feel so bad. All of us would be so heartbroken if that would happen. So we gotta think of something. I, I, I got plan B. Deploy it? that duty downstairs and I'll yeah. entertain. <laughs> they're like, duty, they're like, then there'll be chaos because like they'll be like, we didn't come for this. Clearly we're gonna have to figure this one out. Well, what about an MC? No, I really do think we need an MC because 90% of our energy is going to be spending it mingling with our fans. So I've been working with Telt, who's been assisting us with uh, emailing all of the vendors and sponsors, but her husband happens to be a motivational speaker. She volunteered him as an MC. Let's do it! So I will talk to Tells and I will see if he's available to MC the event. Way to go team! Planning it out! Getting it to work! Doing the pole right. dance! We're gonna have 
one more meetup with everybody. We're going to do a Zoom call at 9 in the morning with Tells, the PR consultant, and the event stylist. So, you want to join us? Let's get on the call and figure it out. Absolutely, I'm there. Yay! One last meeting before the meet and greet just to confirm everything. Okay, so is that it for tonight? Yes, that is it for tonight. We will see you guys tomorrow on Zoom. Okay. Well, it's another day and another huge list of things that need to be taken care of. Erin's already on her conference call this morning with Rocio and some of the planners, so we're gonna see what she's up to. It's not as bright. So one of the new developments that we have today is a potential change in venue. We have way more registrants than we originally anticipated, and even the larger venue that we secured is now kind of questionable in, in terms of being able to accommodate everybody. So we're talking to BGC, we're talking to Francesca. She has thrown out the possibility of an outdoor venue, ground level, right by the Ocampo's apartment building that could easily house everybody that we want to have there. And it's also got some other potential benefits. It's very beautiful. The ground level component is pretty cool. It would open up some opportunities for sponsors that we had talked to who weren't able to do something inside. But what we need to find out is number one, costs associated with that since everything's gonna be out of pocket for both of our families at this point. And number two, if it's actually available. And then it's just a matter of logistics. So we're coordinating with all these different parties right now to see if it would affect any of the existing sponsors, any of the existing food, any of the existing, any of the existing drinks, all the different dynamics that have gone into the planning of this event so far. This is on Saturday already, Anna. Oh my god. Oh my God. <sighs> there are so many moving parts. And don't get me wrong, this is fun. It's, uh, it's a really cool activity to take part in. I'm enjoying it. I just wish we had more time. We are down to two days now until the event and we might be switching the venue, which has so many other logistical implications. So I'm just really hoping this still goes off without a hitch. It's really important to us that we provide a really good experience for everybody who's taken time out of their day and in some cases driving who knows how far and just to come and hang out with us. So we want to make sure that they have a really good time. That's Akon. He's going to be the MC for this event. Salamat. We are in like location limbo. First our apartment search and now this event venue. We are just waiting to hear if we can switch the venue from inside Philippines Stock Exchange to an outdoor garden area where we can accommodate many, many more people. So again, with over 500 registrants, even though not everybody might make it, we want to expect everybody and we want to anticipate serving everybody and entertaining everybody and meeting and greeting everybody. So an outdoor venue would actually work a lot better. So we're in limbo. We're waiting to see what's going to happen. I don't know. I'm calling the Ocampos. They have an update for us. We were trying to get some work done. Kids are playing in the gym, multitasking like crazy here at the hotel. Here we go. All right. What is the, the other? It's a no go. <laughs> what a letdown. Basically, she said that um, it's too late notice and we would need a lot more lights and the cost would go up a lot. Mm. It's definitely a no-go. We're going to have to stick with PSE. Okay. We're saving that for next month's uh, meet and greet. Next um, mm. I think we should maybe explore the idea of having the two event times. I like that that idea to split up the time. I think that's our only option there. Two hour slot, two hour max. All right, I will be over in a couple hours and we will stuff some of those prize bags together. It has been one crazy day, one crazy week, just trying to get details and approvals and confirmations pinned down. Learning the Philippines way of doing business is like drinking from a fire hose, but holy cow, do we have some amazing people helping us out. And for that, we are super, super grateful. What we're learning about event planning is that it's a lot like vlogging. So many things are popping up. We're having to navigate through different obstacles and roll with the punches for sure. And it's also going to be that much more rewarding. So just like at the end of a trip and putting the video together, the final product is really what we're after. And we can't wait to meet you and have this party. And how is that party actually going to turn out? 
You either have to attend or find out in the next episode.